Hello, welcome to the sixth of our confirmation class videos. The subject of this one is church. Now, just to quickly recap what we've looked at already, we saw the last three weeks about God himself, that God is three in one, that the, the catechism says that we believe in God the Father who made me and all the world. We, I believe in God the Son who redeemed me and all mankind and the Holy Spirit who sanctifies me and all the elect people of God. And those three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, are linked there to three actions, creating, redeeming and sanctifying, that is making us more like Jesus. And they're linked to three areas, the creation of all the world, that is the whole universe, the saving of uh, mankind, so all people, and then the um, sanctifying of the people of God. So it's linked to the church, the people who believe in Jesus and who become followers and members of the family of God. All the world, all mankind, all the people of God. So the church, in other words, in the Bible and in the creed, is not a building, but it's a collection of people. When I left my previous parish in Banbury in England, they gave me a present, a picture of the church. And it wasn't a picture of a structure built from stones, uh, although there was a very beautiful church uh, building. But what they gave me was this. It's photographs of all the church members. A picture of the church, because the church is the people of God. The church is a collection of men and women and children from all different backgrounds, from all different races, of all different ages, people who believe and follow Jesus Christ. I'm going to take a look at the Bible and at a place where the very first Christian church is described in Acts chapter 2. Uh, so after uh, Peter, one of Jesus' followers, had been preaching the good news about Jesus, this is what happened. Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and miraculous signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So in that description of the first church, you see some wonderful things. You see, first of all, about how people enter the church through baptism, through repentance and through faith, like we saw in the first of these videos. And then also we see what these believers and followers of Jesus do. The church looks in different directions, um, upwardly, first of all, in terms of its upward actions, there's worship. There's teaching from the Bible and there's prayer. And when Christians gather together uh, on Sundays in church, it's especially for those things to worship God, that is to honour him and sing to him, to, uh, to hear from his word and be having teaching from the Bible and then to pray together to him upwards. But then secondly, there's a kind of inwards part of the church. And we read there in Acts 2 about how the early Christians cared for each other. When somebody was in need, other people would help them out. 
They would even sell stuff that they had in order to provide so that nobody would be hungry, nobody would be lacking. Caring and loving each other is part of the inward action of the church and also fellowship together. Did you hear about how they were meeting with one another in their homes to give encouragement in the faith? And then thirdly, as well as the upwards worship and the inwards care, there's the outward uh, action of the church. Sharing the good news of Jesus. It says how they enjoyed the favour of all the people and how the Lord was adding to their number those who were being saved. So a healthy church family is one that looks upwards to worship God, looks inwards to care for one another and looks outwards to bless everybody around. Well, what about our part of the church? So that was 2000 years ago. We're here now. We're not in Jerusalem where that church was. We're in the year 2021 and we're in Ireland. So what about our part of the church? Well, we're part of the Church of Ireland. The Church of Ireland goes back really to the mission of Patrick uh, to bring Christianity to Ireland in 432 AD, very, very long time ago. And um, it's been said about the Church of Ireland that we're both Catholic and Protestant. Now, what does that mean? Well, you know how in the Apostles' Creed we say, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. And what that means is the universal church, the church across the world, that we're not just on our own in the faith, but we're part of a global movement that you could call the worldwide or the universal church. But also the Church of Ireland is Protestant. What that means is that at the time of the Reformation, about 500 years ago, um, we're part of the movement which sought to go back to the Bible and to take away things that have been added to the faith uh, over many centuries and to try to get back to something that was closer to uh, Acts chapter 2. Now that's not to say in any way that the Church of Ireland is the perfect church or that people in other churches aren't Christians. If you believe and follow Jesus, if you believe in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, if you're sincerely seeking to repent and believe and to obey Christ, then that's being a Christian. But our particular part of the church is one that's marked by our love for the Bible and our desire to put it into practice in our lives. A few more things about the Church of Ireland. What's our structure? Well, the Church of Ireland has dioceses. So a diocese is a geographical area where a bishop has authority and pastoral care over it. Each diocese is divided into parishes and the person who gives pastoral care and leadership in a parish is the rector or minister. Also within each parish there may be small groups, groups meeting for Bible study, groups meeting for Sunday school, there may be organisations like a mother's union or a boys brigade, a Sunday school. Uh, in the church there are different office holders. In the parish you have church wardens, vestry members, you have a treasurer, a secretary, people who teach in Sunday school, many different roles within the church. And in a diocese there are officers as well. An archdeacon who's the bishop's second in command. A dean who looks after the cathedral. Canons who are senior members of the clergy. But all of these are just one way of organising the church. Different churches have different setups and it's not that one is right or wrong. But this is our way of trying to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and to follow him in our place and time. Every church has good points and every church has faults. It has failings. Remember what we said right back at the start. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us and all the elect people of God. So what God is always wanting to do is to take his people and make them more like Jesus.
So church in this world is always going to be imperfect. It's always going to be a bit broken. It's always going to have some faults and do things that are wrong. Our goal is to get closer to Jesus Christ and to be more faithful in following him. And as you go forward through confirmation into being full members of the church, um, what role are you going to play in the church of the future, in the people of God? I wonder. Exciting times ahead. God bless and we'll talk again soon.